Hi everyone. <clears throat> Welcome back to another episode. And this week it feels like in a way a little bit of a continuation from uh, last week. Last week we read the section, uh, This Need Not Be. And this week I thought, you know, we could go into the section, The Responsibility for Sight. And uh, yeah, I just feel like Yeah, I feel like one of the the overall themes for me like this year and and just in general is, you know, the washing away of the unworthiness and stepping into magnitude. And it didn't feel like any kind of coincidence that the stepping into magnitude online retreat landed on my birthday cuz like my whole life I felt like somehow the the age of 25 was going to be the year of magnitude and I never really knew what that meant and I didn't even know of that word really but in my mind it was always like <clears throat> 25 was like okay I'm gonna be like successful that's my millionaire year or whatever and uh, it's gonna be a, a, a huge year like that's what I always thought and now it's like retranslated it's like okay this is the year of magnitude like that's actually the magnitude that I was seeking and so yeah, it feels like all these themes now are falling in line with that stepping into magnitude as, as the overall theme. So, you know, it's like last week I talked about unworthiness as a decision. And it's the same thing as the belief in victimization and victim identity and, and victimizer. Victimizer and, and the victim are really the same thing. And, and it is a decision. Um, and really it's a choice between, you know, it's, it's the responsibility for sight. It's like the only real choice there is in the mind is how, how can I see the world through the Holy Spirit's view or through the ego's perspective. And yeah, just going, going by that, I felt like, you know, it's like this need not be last week was a really strong like, okay, the decision is in your hands. Like this, this really, this need not be, you know. Um, if you're choosing the ego, this need not be. And then this week, it's the responsibility for sight, which is really the same thing. And uh, I know Jeffrey's talked about this on his show, but he would say part of his morning routine from what I remember is he would always read the responsibility for sight. And I've started doing that, except I started to listen to it every morning. Um, on YouTube and I always love like Jimmy Stewart's voice with this and and David also reads it and he also reads the text and so yeah the responsibility for sight it's section two in the chapter called reason and perception it's chapter 21 so it starts off saying we have repeated how little is asked of you to learn this course it is the same small willingness you need to have your whole relationship transformed to joy. The little gifts you offer to the Holy Spirit for which He gives you everything. The very little on which salvation rests. The, ch the tiny change of mind by which the crucifixion is changed to resurrection. And being true, it is so simple that it cannot fail to be completely understood. Rejected, yes, but not ambiguous. And if you choose against it now, it will not be because it is obscure, but rather that this little cost seemed, in your judgment, to be too much to pay for peace. This is the only thing that you need do for vision, happiness, release from pain, and the complete escape from sin, all to be given you. Say only this but mean it with no reservations, for here the power of salvation lies. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have, as I have asked. Yeah, and I just wanted to go over even that first line, I am responsible for what I see. Really, he's saying, I am responsible for how I see. 
you know, it's always a choice between the Holy Spirit or the ego. It's like, I am responsible for that choice. Um, and I know there's this thought sometimes, it's like, okay, I'm responsible for what I see, so was I responsible for World War II or like all the horrific things that happened in the world? It's like, Jesus is like, do not project the error onto time. Um, you are not responsible for the error. You're just responsible for accepting the correction. It's like whatever the ego has done, it's like, okay, that's okay. He's saying you don't have to take responsibility for the error, but now we can choose again. We know that we are responsible for how we see the world. So we're responsible for that decision between the ego and the Holy Spirit, but we're not responsible for what seems to be the effects of the ego. So it says, Deceive yourself no longer that you are helpless in the face of what is done to you. Acknowledge but that you have been mistaken, and all effects of your mistakes will disappear. It is impossible the Son of God be merely driven by events outside of Him. It is impossible that happenings that come to Him were not His choice. His power of decision is a determiner of every situation in which he seems to find himself by chance or accident. No accident nor chance is possible within the universe as God created it, outside of which is nothing. And he's just using the term universe in this example for heaven, but it's not like literally the world of form. It says, suffer, and you decided sin was your goal. Be happy, and you gave the power of decision to him who must decide for God, for you. And this is a little about, this is a little like what Calico was talking about, rules for decision. It's like we, we do have the power of decision, and we can give it to him who must decide for God, for you, which is the Holy Spirit. This is the little gift you offer to the Holy Spirit, and even this he gives you to give yourself. He gives to you to give yourself. For by this gift is given you the power to release your Savior, that He may give salvation unto you. Begrudge not, then, this little offering. Withhold it, and you keep the world as now you see it. Give it away, and everything you see goes with it. Never was so much given for so little. In the holy instant is this exchange effected and maintained. Here is the world you do not want brought to the one you do. And here the one you do is given you because you want it. And then, and then it says, yet for this, the power of your wanting must first be recognized. You must accept its strength and not its weakness. Yeah, so basically when it says, here is the world you do not want brought to the one you do, it's not talking about form. It's talking about, again, perception. It's always bringing it back to the mind. It's like, how am I seeing this with the Holy Spirit or with the ego? And I love that analogy that I talked about a lot on previous shows about like the movie. And it's really like we're, we're watching a movie and, and we're sitting in the theater and it's like the ego seems to be sitting next to us or the Holy Spirit on the other seat. And then it's like when we're watching the movie, the ego keeps saying, look, Look, and he's like pointing to the screen and, and telling us to get lost in whatever's happening on the screen. And then we just forget we're in the theater and we forget that we're even watching a movie. And then basically all the mind training is pointing to actually turn to your right mind and just look at Jesus and he'll remind you that you're actually sitting in a theater and you're safe. And so it's not necessarily that the screen's going to change, 
but it's more like you go back to being the observer rather than identified with whatever's going on in the screen. And that's just a matter of desire. And then it says, yet for this, the power of your wanting must first be recognized. You must accept its strength and not its weakness. You must perceive that what is strong enough to make a world can let it go and can accept correction if it is willing to see that it was wrong. The world you see is but the idle witness that you were right. This witness is insane. You trained it in its testimony, and as it gave it back to you, you listened and convinced yourself that what it saw was true. You did this to yourself. See only this, and you will also see how circular the reasoning on which your, quote, seeing rests. This was not given you. This was your gift to you and to your brother. Be willing, then, to have it taken from him and be replaced with truth. And as you look upon the change in him, it will be given you to see it in yourself. Perhaps you do not see the need for you to give this little offering. Okay. And then it just says, if you don't feel you need, you see the need to give this little offering to the Holy Spirit, your little willingness, then look closer then at what it is. And very simply see in it the whole exchange of separation for salvation. All that the ego is, is an idea that it is possible that things could happen to the Son of God without His will, and thus without the will of His Creator, whose will cannot be separate from His own. And then later it says, the Holy Spirit can give you faith and holiness and vision to see it easily enough. But you have not left open and unoccupied the altar where the gifts belong. Where they should be, you have set up your idols to something else. This other quote, will, which seems to tell you what must happen, you give reality. And what would show you otherwise must therefore seem unreal. All that is asked of you is to make room for truth. You are not asked to make or do what lies beyond your understanding. All you are asked to do is let it in, only to stop your interference with what will happen of itself, simply to recognize again the presence of what you thought you gave away. So basically, Yeah, I remember even, I mentioned this before, but even like Tony Robbins was saying in an interview, when he goes up on stage, his prayer before he speaks is, I mean, he didn't say this word for word, but to step back and out of the way so that whatever wants to speak through him can speak through him. And I feel like, Yeah, it's just saying, all that is asked of you is to make room for truth. You are not asked to make or do what lies beyond your understanding. All you are asked to do is let it in, only to stop your interference. Yeah, so we'll just let that sink in.
Okay. So then paragraph 9 says, We have already said that wishful thinking is how the ego deals with what it wants to make it so. There is no better demonstration of the power of wanting and therefore of faith to make its goals seem real and possible. Faith in the unreal leads to adjustments of reality to make it fit the goal of madness. The goal of sin induces the perception of a fearful world to justify its purpose. What you desire, you will see. And if its reality is false, you will uphold it by not realizing all the adjustments you have introduced to make it so. When vision is denied, confusion of cause and effect becomes inevitable. The purpose now becomes to keep obscure the cause of the effect and make effect appear to be a cause. Yeah, it's just interesting because actually I recently, the last few nights, it's like my whole life I've had this fear of fear of going blind or something and even when I was very little, it's like even going, it seemed ridiculous, but even going down like a water slide, I had this like watch on that would make some light. So it was like when I would go down the slide at like an amusement park, I would have to look at the light to make sure I wasn't actually blind, like, go, like going down a water slide. And, and recently it's been coming up like, at night, like this, this thing where I'm about to fall asleep and my eyes are closed, and I'm like, okay, let me look at some kind of source of light just to make sure I'm not blind. You know, it's like, it seems ridiculous, but it, it feels like what this is talking about. It's not really about the body's vision, but it's about like true vision. And, and when that's denied, it's like the confusion of cause and effect will happen, basically. And even something something so simple like this morning our dog Benito was barking a lot and um, and you know I was actually going through like a turbulent um, nighttime dreams and yeah it was like a lot of craziness seems to be was seeming to go on and basically what happened was Benito kept barking which kept waking me up and it's like there's two ways to see it of course right so there's like the ego's perspective and then the Holy Spirit's perspective. And with the ego, you know, the ego is trying to come in and be like, listen, you need to go back to sleep. Like, go back to your dreams and, and you need sleep. And, and, then, and then I didn't even see this until later, but it was like, wow. It was like even Benito, he was just trying to wake me up so that I could, you know, pray and let go of whatever was going through my mind so that my mind could be at rest and then, you know, go back to sleep. So it's really like, it is a responsibility for sight. It's like we can decide on how we want to see all the events that seem to be going on in our life. And that's just one small, one seemingly small example of that. It's like even Benito barking is like, I can see this differently. Oh, wow, he's actually trying to help me. You know, it's like, it can't be that something outside of me is trying to bother me. There's always healing and like whatever's going on in our life. So yeah, with that, even with that example, it's like I am responsible for what I see. It's like I'm responsible for how I want to see a dog barking, waking me up. It's like I can see that, that it's disturbing my peace of mind or that I, I can see that actually it's helping me go to peace of mind. And then I choose the feelings I experience. And that comes from deciding with either the ego or the Holy Spirit. And then I, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And then, and everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I, as I have asked. So it was like, even my mind was calling for that to happen. You know, it's like, it's like, oh, you're disturbed, okay. Benito, can you please bark for me? Like, wake me up and so I can sit up and pray and go back to sleep. 
So that's just one example. But yeah, of course, this applies to everything. And then this next paragraph, it says, it is as needful that you recognize you made the world you see as that you recognize that you did not create yourself. They are the same mistake. Nothing created not by your creator has any influence over you. And if you think what you have made can tell you what you see and feel and place your faith in its ability to do so, you are denying your creator and believing that you made yourself. For if you think the world you made has power to make you what it wills, you are confusing son and father, effect and source. The son's creations are like his father's. Yet in creating them, the son does not delude himself that he is independent of his source. His union with it is the source of his creating. Apart from this, he has no power to create, and what he makes is meaningless. And then just to skip ahead a little, it says, Yet the truth is you and your brother were both created by a loving Father, who created you together and as one. See what, quote, proves otherwise, and you deny your whole reality. But grant that everything that seems to stand between you and your brother, keeping you from each other, and separate from your father, you made in secret, and the instant of release has come to you. All its effects are gone because its source has been uncovered. It is its seeming independence of its source that keeps you prisoner. This is the same mistake as thinking you are independent of the source by which you were created and have never left. Yeah, even the show, I love what it said. It's when it said you just have to make room for truth. It's like even the show is just another practical application, like a practice for me to come on the show and make room for truth by stepping back. And it's like every time the ego wants to come in and like tell me, no, you're supposed to say this or tell me you're supposed to say that, it's like then comes this interference. And so, yeah, it's like we all get whatever lessons we need right now in this moment. It's like you can just take a look at around you and it's like whatever's in front of you right now is exactly what you need for your healing. And then the Holy Spirit will tell you if something needs to shift. But it's like you can trust that whatever's going on right now is exactly what you need. So, yeah, it's like all this show is for me is like another opportunity to step back you know, and let him lead the way and, and see and wash away that interference of like what, what the ego wants to say. And really it's because we're afraid of what, it, what the Holy Spirit's message is. So yeah, I just feel like it's really important and you, you guys can join me in, in this daily morning practice of just going over the responsibility for sight. I know Jeffrey's talked about it and then there's the rules for decision and yeah, I just feel like it's really powerful and it's something that I definitely feel is important for me to reinforce every day. Okay, well thank you guys and thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.